Today, we're talking math with confidence and all of the manipulatives that come along with it. And how do I go about organizing those? Hi, and welcome. Thanks for joining me today. So math with confidence, if you have followed my curriculum pick or my um, update mid-year or any of those, you know that I really, really, really like math with confidence. And this year I have two kids using it. My first, um, sorry, my kindergartner is currently halfway through the first grade book. And my preschooler is about halfway through kindergarten. And with this curriculum, uh, you don't have to buy a math manipulative kit, which is great. But there are manipulatives that come along with it. There's a lot of cards, there's dice, there's counters. And it's not all complicated. There's not a whole lot of them. But you end up with all these moving pieces and nowhere to put them. Um, and I've seen this question multiple times on different Facebook pages or forums of how do you organize your main pages to make it easy to access and not chaotic? How do you just keep them all together and make them easy to get at? So while my solutions may not be for everyone, I thought I would show you guys how I go about organizing my manipulatives, how I have them, how I use them, um, just give you guys ideas. I would love to know any ideas or tricks that you've come up with for yours because I might get some great ideas from you guys. So if you have some, please comment them below and let me know. Uh, otherwise, let's get to it. All right, this is what I have for math. Uh, I'm going to show you how each of these pieces work. So we'll just kind of start. She has a lot of games for subtraction addition that use card decks. I just keep two decks on the top of my cards, my school cards. Um, they're just accessible. I pull out the cards I want. I generally am using the same group of cards for a, for like my first grader. It's normally like two through nines. So those are always in one half of the deck and I just pull them out and use them. I don't find opening these up and sorting them really helpful for me. I know some people do, but that's not my method. But another thing that you use a lot of is index cards, which you write on. And I find this little file can be wonderful for that. Now, sometimes I don't write index cards. Sometimes I pull up a app on my phone that's a spinner. And this idea I have stolen from the Facebook group. I'll pop a picture of it so you can kind of get an idea. But for games that are like flip a coin, heads or tails is one or two, or flip cards that are one or two, I tend to pull up that spinner instead of pulling out an extra manipulative on my so the way I have this grouped is in the front, I have two sets of cards, one through 10. Um, and then I have another two sets of cards, one through 10, because often the problem when you have like four sets of cards, one through 10, they only pull up just a few numbers. It's really hard to like find the ones you're looking for. So I find separating them out helps. Um, and then I have, I think, two sets of groups, 10 through 20. Um, I have my um, currency price cards, because for some games you have that. I have my tally cards. I have my days of the months cards. I have my... Um, shapes cards for first grade math that's in there and then i have some higher numbers i think this is 20 to 100 back here a couple sets of that and having them grouped just allows me to grab what i need quickly and easily i don't rewrite these i know in the book they say you know have the daughter write the numbers my daughter's writing the numbers fine so i just keep the same set here and this keeps them neat and organized and i tuck it in my cart next to those card decks okay so then lastly we have these two pieces this essentially is all of the black line masters that she has in her books and this is from preschool all the way through first grade all the black line masters that are in any of those i laminate them cut them out and then after we get to a book in my or after we get to a game in my daughter's first grade math book i take that page from her student workbook and i make a copy of the instructions from my teacher's workbook and laminate the back of the game so that whenever they reference this in the future i don't have to go find it in her student workbook or the teacher workbook i just have it right here and i can grab it so these are really easy to access for me all over again. Okay, so those are all like manipulative pieces that I use, but I don't think of those as my main set of manipulatives. This little guy here is what I think of when I think of manipulatives. I got this from the dollar store. It's small, it's compact, it fits really nicely in my cart. It's got a lid, so I don't know, I just, just help. And it might look impractical because you've got all this stuff stacked on each other. But for me, it's normally setting like this big thingy. I just put the things I use on top. These things I just pull out and set to the side on top of whatever's next to them in the cart because these are not used all the time. And then I have a pair of dice in here. I have these little counters. These little centimeter blocks are great. I love them. I don't even know where I picked them up. But having these in multiple colors, I have more than this. Um, these have been my favorite counters of all time, and they work for just about everything. Uh, and then in the front, I have some coins, and I think I put the amount that I have in here so I don't lose any. 
Um, and then on the side, I have some fake money that just kind of tucks down in there. I have another set of counters that I use occasionally, not as often as those. This little set of cards that was actually from the preschool math at home. I don't think I need it in here anymore. And then her, um, what are they called? These shape things that they use. And I'm not remembering what they're called, but this little tote of those. And these stay in the bottom because I don't use them very often. And then occasionally I call for something with, I left these in because I think we use these for analog or digital clock. Um, and I left them in here for just next time. So I don't have to keep getting the same toothpick or new toothpick dirty over and over. And they just kind of tuck in. Normally, I very rarely have to pull more than one or two things out at a time. And so I really leave these coins and these counters on top because these are what I use all the time. And the rest just kind of gets tucked in on the side where I can reach it. And then these go back on top when I'm done. And my lid goes on like so. And it's compact, it's tidy, and it just is neat and easy to use for me. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, maybe it was helpful for you in that you got some ideas of how to make yours more organized. Or maybe it was helpful for you to see that yours isn't as chaotic as you think, and mine is just about as bad as yours. Just depends on how organized you are to begin with. Uh, but either way, I hope that you enjoyed this. And please, like I said, comment below any ideas that you have for helping me get more organized, because I am never adverse to... Uh, cool organization methods that work well. So let me know those. And as always, we will see you guys again soon.